You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Emmanuel. If God is with us, who can be against us? No one. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Our focus, part three. Your focus creates your feelings. That is, whatever you are feeling now is a product of your focus. You are what you give your attention to. If you give your attention to God, you are what God says you are. If you give your attention to God, you have what God says you have. If you give your attention to God, you can do what God says you can do. Viewers all over the world, your attention is needed. What are you experiencing now? If it is contrary to your desires, stop. Take time to change your focus. As your neighbor, what are you experiencing now? If it is contrary to your desires, stop. Take time to change your focus. Pay any price to protect your focus. You are created in the image of Father. Use every proper means to protect your focus. Conflict is the trap of the detraction. Satan uses conflict to break our focus on our assignment. Satan uses conflict to break our focus on our assignment. Tell your neighbor, conflict is trap of detraction. Tell your neighbor again. Let me take you to the book of Mark 9. Let's quickly look at Mark 9. I'll take my reading from verse 43. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better to enter life money than with two hands to go into hell. Where the fire never goes out, if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. Pay any price to protect your focus. Your focus is a personal decision. It takes the grace of God to handle a new responsibility and a new desire. Our goals. Let me take you to the book of Exodus 14, verse 15. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. It means that uh, Moses never knew that God has answered his prayer. He still said, God, do it for me, do it for me, do it for me. God said to him, ah, what is wrong with you? I have done it. This is exactly what has happened to 
90% of us here today. We know how to pray, but we don't know how to sit back in faith and listen to what God has to say. We know how to pray, but we don't know how to sit back in faith and listen to what God has to say. Let's just see your hand if you quite understand what I'm talking about. If that message is true for your life, rise up and give thanks to God. It's true for your life. It's picture of your life. The Lord is speaking to you. You may be seated. You know how to pray. Lord, do it, do it. But you don't know whether God has answered your prayer or not. It is when man of God will say, Amen, sit down, you sit down. But when you say, In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, and you hear the voice that the prayer has answered, you will stop. But when you cannot hear, it is the circumstances that stop you many times. We know how to send our petition to God, but we don't know how to sit back in faith and listen to what God has to say about that petition. This is exactly what happened to Moses. The Lord was telling Moses that you have to do something else besides praying. You have to do something else besides praying. In other words, there is a time to pray and time to sit back in faith and listen to what God has to say. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. It means the gentleman did not know that God has answered his prayer. You are still crying. You are still crying. Tell the Israelites to move on. It means I've answered your prayer. Moses was silent, but his faith was not silent. In other words, Though Moses was silent, his faith was active. Active faith will make that which is against you to be for you. Active faith will make that which is against you to be for you. When you act faith, those that are against you will be for you. Remember what happened to Peter at the seaside when Jesus said to him, drop your nets. But later he acted faith and he found success in disappointment. A fine breakthrough in disappointment. A fine success in failure. A fine breakthrough in hardship. He said, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. The Lord was telling Moses, why should you continue to pray? Hallelujah. Why should you continue to pray? I have heard you. Advent. We heard not any prayer from Moses. Yet, the Lord asked him, Why are you crying out to me? This means God sees 
our meditations, our thoughts, our cry, our sighs, our heart desires. Hmm. We hear not any prayer from Moses. We heard not any prayer. Read your Bible. He never offered any prayer. Yet, the Lord asked him, why are you crying out? This means God sees our thoughts, our meditation, our heart desires. Whichever way we express ourselves under the check and conduct of the Holy Spirit, He hears us. Tell your neighbor, whichever way you express yourself under the check and conduct of the Holy Spirit, He hears you. But I just, ah, oh, under the check and conduct of the Holy Spirit, he hears you. Ooh, under the check and conduct of the Holy Spirit, he hears you. Under the check and conduct of the Holy Spirit, he hears you. Under the check and conduct of the Holy Spirit, he hears you. Every believer's has their own language of communicating their needs to God. Tell your neighbor. Every believer has their own language of communicating their needs to God. We know how to send our petition to God. But we don't know <laughs> how to sit back in faith and listen to what God has to say about that petition. This is the problem every one of us have here. Here we are today because of this singular problem. Many have become tools in the hands of Satan. Many have become tools in the hands of who? Satan. In that 15, then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. God was saying to Moses, I have heard you at faith. I have heard you at faith. Even then, in the natural, Moses could still see the obstacle, the rest see. But God was still saying something through the obstacle. <laughs> Moses could still see the Red Sea. When the Lord said, At faith, I have heard you. Now, at faith, Moses looked forward and could still see the Red Sea. But God was still saying something through the Red Sea. Remember what I told you? Active faith will make that which is against us to be for us. Active faith will make that which is against us to be for us. When the Lord said to Moses, I have heard you at faith. Even then, in the natural, 
Moses could still see the Red Sea. Remember, we walk by faith, not by sight. The more we get into the natural, the bigger Satan becomes. Moses could still see the Red Sea. But God was still saying something through the Red Sea. He was saying, I am God. I will make a road through wilderness and give you the stream of water there. Every mountain for your sake shall be leveled. There's racy. Move and see what will happen. Whether you will not walk on the racy. He said, I will make a road through wilderness and give you the stream of water there. Every mountain for your sake shall be leveled. God and his government are incontestable. Even then in the natural, Moses could still see the Red Sea. But God was still saying something through the Red Sea. God was saying every mountain for your sake shall be leveled. Because I call you by name. Fear not. God's government and his authority are incontestable. Are incontestable. His power and majesty are enough to support his authority. Moses stood as a communicator between visible and invisible. I mean between spiritual and the material world. As a communicator, he had his own language with which he interacted with God. If this is under the check and conduct of the Holy Spirit, Jesus hears. It is a grace given to every true Christian to be able to speak in different languages. As a communicator between visible and invisible, I mean between, between spiritual and material world, he had his own language with which he interacted with Baba God. When his people were murmuring, were grumbling, uh -huh. you carry us to this place to kill us, you carry us to this place to destroy us, you, 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 why can't you leave us in Egypt? Why, why, why? You, you, you. When they were grumbling, when they were murmuring, when they were complaining and rebelling, his act was deeply engaged with God. Let someone say, his heart was deeply engaged with God, with Baba God. 
it remains silent. To get above our fear, we must remember the more difficult and trying situations God has taken us through in the past. If tiger come inside now, I quickly remember the situation that is even bigger than tiger happened to me in the past. And Baba God saved me. When you remember this, this will impart a strength to endure your present situation. Tell your neighbor, to live above fear, live above fear. we must remember the more difficult and trying situations God has taken us through in the past. If I may share with you my experience, my case in 1996, a battalion of fierce looking soldiers came into the church to arrest me on account of a petition from my adversaries accusing me of dealing in drugs. And we all know something I knew nothing about. You all know the penalty. During the military regime, capital punishment. My enemy wanted me dead at all costs. One whose focus is not on God is bound to be frightened and panic striking. One, the fear that your enemy can plant the hesitation on one's premises before calling in the police, the fear. Two, the fear of the punishment if found guilty all days are more than enough to demoralize one. The Holy Spirit never makes mistakes. So, tell your neighbor, relax. In times of testing, the Holy Spirit knows your enemy. Your enemy always makes me sick. Let's watch the video for two minutes. Imagine the rumors and gossip that spread as a result of this incident. A prophet detained in a cell for taking drugs and harboring weapons. However, his enemies soon noticed that not even the detention in a cell and false accusation could shake his faith in God. To the wise, this was a foolish thing, but God used it to reveal his purpose in the life of TV Joshua, giving him the necessary experience and maturity to handle the greater responsibilities God was preparing for him. Like Joseph in the Bible, he has learned what it is to be loved, hated, rejected, enslaved accused and falsely convicted. He bore everything that happened to him calmly. This is the letter from the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency confirming the innocence of TB Joshua and clearing him from the charge of drug dealing, 
for which he was detained in a cell for thirteen days. Remember, our enemies may rob us of our liberty and confine us in a prison cell, but they cannot shut us out of the throne of mercy and communion with God. Falsely accused of drug dealing by the NDLEA, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, T.B. Joshua was arrested and held in a cell for 13 days. This is the first appearance of T.B. Joshua, having just been released from the cell. He addressed the congregation, thanking them for their faithfulness and love, for standing by him in the hard times, referring to their unequal effort towards his absence. You can see the man of God T.B. Joshua looking lean, having spent 13 days in the cell. for your unequal efforts towards an absence. So I'm here to thank you all, God of my children, I'm so grateful to you people. If you now stay this in your mind that why me about all this persecution, tribulation, all sorts of things, I want you to now think back again. Why me about the spiritual place in my life? When you count the blessing of God in your life, doubting will fly away. Even if you are suffering a good day, you laugh of this, you laugh of that. But remember the blessing of God like food, shelter, and many other things you enjoy every day. Having searched and found nothing against him, T.B. Joshua was released from the cell and the following Sunday appeared in the church service to thank the members and appreciate their love and support during his absence. Rather than to complain and query, why me of all this trouble and persecution, T.B. Joshua encouraged the congregation to remember the spiritual blessings many are denied of, such as food and shelter, that they can hold the very word of God in their hands and read it, that they have the knowledge of his saving grace. The man of God encouraged them, saying, when you begin to count your blessings, your doubts would fly away. The Holy Spirit leads us to a place of testing. When Jesus was being tempted, he did not cry out. Jesus passed the test and the anointing began to flow. Tell your neighbor, pay any price to protect your focus. Your testing qualifies you for a promotion. Your promotion qualifies you for rewards. Tell your neighbor, your testing qualifies you for a promotion. Your promotion qualifies you for reward. When you look at the road to the throne, you will see persecution. You will see intimidation. You will see blackmail. You will see campaign of calumnies. You will see slanderous remarks. You will see name calling. That is the road to the throne. You get over fear when you remember the more difficult and trying situations God has taken you through in the past. So relax on common blessing attracts on common persecution. This is why you see persecution so high. On common direction attracts on common hatred. 
Common hatred attracts common persecution. Uncommon things attract uncommon enemy. If you are doing something uncommon, rare, you should be ready for uncommon enemy. Unique enemy. There's nothing you can do about persecution. There's nothing you can do about intimidation. There's nothing you can do about blackmail. It will continue because uncommon blessing attract uncommon blackmail. Uncommon blessing attract uncommon enemy. There's nothing you can do about blackmail. There's nothing you can do about intimidation. There's nothing you can do about campaign of calumny. There's nothing you can do about slanderous remarks. There's nothing you can do about intimidation. There's nothing you can do about name calling. There is nothing. There I don't want you to get disappointed because when you begin to say, Lord, I don't want this persecution. Lord, remove it. I don't want you to get disappointed. Never you offer that kind of prayer. Don't tell God that he should remove enemy. Removing enemy is removing blessing. Removing persecution is removing blessing. Removing intimidation is removing promotion. Removing name quality is removing. I want you to stand up and stretch your hand to viewers there. That your testing qualifies you for a promotion. Your testing qualifies you for a promotion. Your persecution qualifies you for a promotion. Your hatred, intimidation, blackmail, slanderous remarks, name calling qualifies you for promotion. Your promotion qualifies you for rewards. You may be seated. When we try to overcome our obstacle, we are doing two things. We are making history. What people and children yet unborn will read about us. Fulfilling our destiny that is marching towards the throne, our throne. What we are doing now becomes history the next day. Today, opportunity. Yesterday, history. Tomorrow, mystery. What you are doing now will soon become history. The person who folds his hand will not have any record the next day. You talk of trouble, you talk of problem, but true problems, God speaks strength and courage to our lives. Whatever situation you are in now, please, it will be too early to jump to conclusion, to complain as a Christian. It may be to stop you a while in order to preserve you. It may be to stop you a while in order to strengthen your desire for God. It may be to strengthen you a while in order to keep you for a new level in life. It may be to stop you a while in order to 
reform you because you need to be reformed. You talk of Joseph in a prison. You talk of Joseph, you talk of Joseph. Which one is yours? For gold to be gold, it must pass through furnace. Tell your neighbor, for gold to be gold, it must pass through fire. Human character need to go through trial. Same, our character need to go through fire. Through test. Your character need to go through test before you can become warriors. The answer is to act with God. There is so much right and privileges in Christ. So, right, sir? Right now, ask God, open my eyes of faith that I may see that I may see that other side. Other side. You know, you need to see other side. What do I mean by other side? God's opinion about yourself, about others. Joseph saw that God's security was beyond the dry pit. That was why he endured. That was why his heart was not troubled. Do you know your heart is troubled? Tell your neighbor your heart is troubled. You need internal joy to survive. Say, I need internal joy to survive. So people, your heart is trouble. Your heart is trouble. Consider the attitude of Moses as he stood between the Red Sea and pursuing Egyptian armies. As we are standing, think about that. Consider the attitude of Moses as he stood between the Red Sea and pursuing Egyptian soldiers. If his heart was troubled, he would not have survived. The same thing happened to you today. You are in between Red Sea and the Egyptian soldier. What is your Red Sea? You are in between, but your heart is troubled. That is why you cannot stand. Moses was calm, focused, and determined. The Bible says he was neither moved by the regrets, grumbling, murmuring, complaining, and rebellion, and loss of faith of his people. But you, you are moved by what people say, what people do. That is why your heart is troubled. Ask God to open the eyes of your faith. Prayer, open the eyes of my faith. That I may see, that I may see, that I may see. Your protecting hand. Prayer. Demande à Dieu d'ouvrir les yeux de ta foi afin que tu puisses voir sa main protectrice sur ta vie. In Jesus Christ's name we pray.